shalom. You didn't think I could do that, right? <laughs> uh, that was quite an introduction. I don't know about being the most eloquent speaker, but um, I'm delighted and honored to be with all of you this, af this, this afternoon now. Uh, Consul General, you took us back with a wonderful story about the um, Paraguayan president and, and how his vote was secured for this resolution. I also would like to take us back uh, behind the scenes, if you will, to the vote of, on this wonderful resolution that we're commemorating today. Coincidentally, a few days earlier than this historic date, on the 25th of November, Catholics around the world mark the anniversary of the birth of a gentleman by the name of Angelo Giuseppe Roncalli. Now, you might not recognize that name, but you will certainly recognize the title Pope John XXIII. Most people know that his papacy symbolized a warming of the relationship between the Vatican and the Jewish world. Fewer people are aware, I believe, of Angelo Rincali's life-saving actions during the Holocaust when he served as the apostolic delegate to Turkey. And while in Istanbul, he saved hundreds of Jews, facilitating their transport into the then British mandate. Sadly, even fewer people know that after the war, as now papal nuncio to France, Angelo Roncalli played an important role in trying to facilitate a positive vote for the then coming resolution we are commemorating today. It's my premise that his efforts may have helped pave the way for the creation of the State of Israel. A gentleman by the name of Moshe Staret, whose uh, photograph and reference was made to him in the video, then head of the political department of the Jewish Agency in Europe, and later a prime minister of Israel, was worried, and rightfully so, about how the delegates from Latin American countries in the General Assembly regarded this resolution. For the partition to pass, as the video pointed out, a majority two-thirds vote was necessary. These Latin American countries, then predominantly Catholic, were inclined to vote for the resolution, but Mr. Saret wanted to be sure of it. Without their support, he knew that the motion would be rejected. So he had a, he had a great deal of concern about the Vatican influence here. The Vatican wielding its influence on these countries, fearing especially that the Vatican would try to get them to vote against the resolution in spite of the Holy See's expressed intentions to the contrary. Thus, he wanted to meet with someone, with some influence at the Vatican. And one of his assistants, a man by the name of Moshe Seth, knew someone who knew someone who knew Angelo Roncalli, papal nuncio to France, and a meeting was arranged for him. Seth's meeting with Angelo Roncalli was conducted in a very warm atmosphere with Roncalli promising he would do his utmost to help. And just a few days later, he confirmed with Mr. Sneth that he would have an audience with the then Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Domenico Tardini. The meeting was scheduled for the 3rd of October, 1947, and Angelo Roncalli deliberately moved a planned trip to Rome, moved up that planned trip, in order to be close at hand, just in case he would be needed. And while Cardinal Sardini did not make any promises, Mr. Sneth felt that he had succeeded in conveying Israel's case. And after the meeting with Cardinal Tardini, Sneth met with Angelo Roncalli and reported his impressions of the meeting to him. But Angelo Roncalli was not satisfied. He had expressed he had expected a firm commitment from Cardinal Cardini, but he also realized that he'd done everything at that point that he possibly could. 
in the end, we know that Mr. Smith's mission did turn out to be a success. To be sure, other factors contributed to the achievement as well. But one can, I think, assume that his meeting with Cardinal Tardini, facilitated by Angelo Roncalli, had a positive impact. As the video pointed out, 12 Latin American countries supported the partition. Six abstained, only Cuba voted against it. Thus, in a single decade, I believe this extraordinary man, Angelo Roncalli, later Pope John XXIII, showed what interreligious dialogues should be about, and interreligious solidarity should be about, standing for one another. He managed, within that one decade, to help the Jewish people at two critical historic junctions, saving lives during the Holocaust and helping achieve the establishment of the State of Israel. One of his successors as Pope, John the Pope John Paul II, often maintained that Jews and Catholics must be a blessing to one another. I hope and pray that we continue to do that this day and forevermore. Thank you for having me.